Hi everyone. This week I'm going to be talking about the Microsoft Word Styles function and showing you some easy ways to format your manuscript. For those completely new to Styles or Microsoft Word in general, Styles are a set of predetermined options that control formatting in your document. If you've never used the styles function before, chances are that you've been making formatting changes such as changing typefaces, adjusting line spacing and indenting manually. You might be wondering what advantages using the styles function has over doing it the manual way. Well, there are several. Firstly, using direct formatting in a document that you plan to upload as an ebook is generally not a good idea. Direct formatting can sometimes get lost in translation between your Word document and your ebook file and some pretty weird things can happen. In addition, you need to have your headings properly styled so that they can appear in a table of contents, which most ebooks offer to readers and print books as well. They're also a massive time saver for you and help you to become more efficient in your work. They also help to ensure consistency throughout your document and they also give you an easier way to navigate throughout your document. In this video I'm going to show you where the styles function lives inside Word, how to modify existing styles to suit your requirements and how to create new styles. I'll also be showing you a couple of advanced options which will make you even more efficient when writing or editing. Let's open up Word and get started. I'm using Word 2016 for Mac so your display might be slightly different. In general all the options should look pretty similar. For anything different in the Windows version of Word I'll show you the alternative method so don't worry. Here we've got a normal document that hasn't had any formatting applied to it. So what would happen if you opened up Word and just started typing? While it does the job, there are some issues with it that using the styles function might solve. The chapter headings, for example, aren't distinctive or in a proper format. They just look like part of the text. This also means that if we go and try to insert a table of contents, it just doesn't work, as Word can't tell where the chapter headings are. The text is readable, but I wouldn't want to read or edit a whole book in that font and spacing. Lastly, if we go and have a look at the navigation pane, which we can access by clicking View at the top and then selecting Navigation pane, we can see that there is no easy way to get around the manuscript, it's blank. We'd have to just scroll and use the search function to get around the chapters as it stands. So let's go back and look at our chapter headings. The first thing we want to do is to put our chapter headings in a heading style so that they stand out, can be included in the table of contents and show up in the navigation pane. On the home menu, you should see a window like this. This is called the Styles Quick Access menu and you can do most basic things from it. Looking at it now, we can see that our chapter heading is currently in the normal style as that's what's highlighted. If we look along the line, we can see that there are already a couple of heading styles there. If we put our cursor anywhere inside the chapter line and click, the chapter head is now in the heading style. That's all well and good, but it's unlikely that the default heading style is the one you're going to want for your own book. That's where the modify style function comes in handy. Going back up to the heading style we just chose, if we right click on it, we can choose the modify option. The menu that pops up will allow us to change various things about the appearance of the heading style. We can choose a different font, size, justification and even colour. Once we've done that and we click OK, we can now see that both the chapter heading has updated to the new style and the menu at the top now shows what our new style looks like. We now want to go and apply that style to some of the other chapters in our book, so if we just go and do that, 
And then if we go and look at the navigation pane again, we can see that the chapter headings now appear within Maven that we can just click on the relevant chapter heading to maneuver around the document. Also, if we go and try to insert our table of contents again, it's now working. But what about subheadings? They need their own style too. Like the heading style, we can choose to modify an existing style, or we can also design one completely from scratch. On the Mac version of Word, the way to do this is by clicking the Styles pane at the top and clicking on New Style. On the Windows version of Word, if you just go up to the little symbol on the bottom right of the Styles menu here and click, and then go down to the Add New Style option here. The first thing we want to do is give our style a distinctive name so that we can easily find it in the menu. We then need to choose if we want to base our new style off of an existing one. This is handy if you want to create a style for, say, formatting emails in your story that utilises much of the same options as your normal style, but just has a slightly different indent. That saves you a bit of time as you only have to change the indentation options and not go through selecting the font and sizing etc all over again. In this case though, we will just create one from scratch. Once we have selected our various font size and colour and justification options, we simply click OK and our new style has been created. And we can use that to update the subhead. So again, let's go through and do that for another couple of chapters. So, so far, so good. But we can get even more advanced. Let's have a look at this chapter, which is missing its chapter heading and subhead. To put them in the correct styles, we could put our cursor in the text and choose from the options at the top, like we've been doing before. But we can also set it up so that our subhead is automatically formatted when we write a chapter head. To do that, we need to go back into our heading style that we modified earlier and look at this option, style for following paragraph. At the moment, it's set to normal. So when you press your chapter head and press enter, the next line will be in the normal style. But if we select subhead instead and now try to write our chapter and subhead, we can see that the text is automatically in the correct style, saving us a bit of time every time we write a chapter head. You can also use the styles function to change the bulk of your text too by modifying the normal style. We can choose from different fonts and sizes as per the chapter header. We can also take a look at things like indenting the first line of the text as well as increasing the spacing between lines which gives us just improved readability. There's loads that you can do with a styles function, so this is just intended to be a brief introduction. Hopefully you'll now understand a bit more about the benefit of using styles, as well as how to modify existing styles and create new ones to suit your requirements. Next time I'm going to be looking at the templates function of Word and how that can save you even more time. This will be useful for writers, but I think it'll probably be even more useful for my fellow editors, so stay tuned. And thank you very much for watching.